I am Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. Welcome to this episode of Rurals at the Ranch, which is airing on Thursday, February 10th, 2022. I am joined by Sarek, one of our Royals at the Ranch. And in this episode, we're going to go over body language. It's going to be an extensive review of what body language you can expect to see in your Python Regis when they're comfortable and relaxed, when they're very much stretched outside of their comfort zone and they're starting to get anxious or a little bit fearful. And then when they're in that red zone and they're highly distressed, These are important pieces of body language to be able to recognize because you need to be able to realize when it is okay to continue your interaction with your snake, when you need to practice approach and retreat and gradual desensitization, when it's time to back off, and when you need to completely leave your snake alone, put your snake away, or take away whatever the snake is afraid of. So we're just going to look at a whole bunch of footage of some different Python Regis. I'm going to try to tell you in the narration what their body language is. Hopefully you, you notice their body language as we look at the video. And then realize that the snakes that are comfortable and relaxed with whatever's happening is generally okay to continue that interaction. As soon as they start shifting into that, hmm, I'm a little bit cautious and unsure, stretched outside of my comfort zone. I'm not quite sure if what's happening is okay or not. That is the time that you need to retreat and give them time to reassess. And then watch, do they go back to being comfortable and relaxed again? Or do they move into a freeze behavior or a hiding behavior? Do they try to get away or do they become even more distressed? And absolutely, if you notice that they get into that red zone where they're clearly distressed by what's going on, you need to stop what you're doing immediately and get your snake to a safe location. By safe location, I mean someplace that they feel safe and secure and are going to have the time and ability to get themselves together and relax. All right, so let's take a look at what I put together for you. Our first subject is Buffy. She is still with her breeder. She's exhibiting slow movement, a slight S in her neck. She's tongue flicking. She's intermittently doing brief periods of freezing with no tongue flicking. And then you'll notice that she does a sudden retreat. And with that, she exhibits increased speed as she's trying to get away from a human. Following this, when the human's actually holding her, you see rapid tongue flicks faster forward movement than before. You see that she is going away from the human. Once she's on the table, she does have intermittent periods of freezing, and that's based on her avoidance of the human presence and avoiding any contact with that human. She cautiously pauses. With relaxed forward movement, she eventually starts moving away from the person but moving off in a forward direction where she can explore. So this is a combination of green and yellow zone behaviors. These are two snakes also at a breeder and you see that one was already alert and moving around before the tubs even opened and then immediately sprang out. Forward movement, tongue flicking, investigating the other snake who is freezing. Next, we're gonna take a look at one of my snakes that you've seen before, his name is Ezra. He is out in the open, he's comfortably exploring, he's not hiding, he's not looking for a place to hide. He's fluidly orienting towards environmental stimuli. His locomotion is linear, he's all stretched out. His body is toned but relaxed and he's got comfortable tongue flicking going on. Very fluid movement, nothing to indicate that he's tense or fearful whatsoever. This is Gunji when he was actually just arriving. You see at first he's freezing and his neck is in an S shape. And then if you watch closely, he comes out of hiding, he starts to tongue flick is the first movement that you see. Then he starts forward movement with his body as he's tongue flicking. And then he comes out of hiding with slow forward movement. This is all body language indicating that he is curious. He's cautious but not fearful and 
he's curious about the smells and the environment that he has just been exposed to for the very first time. You'll see him do some small yawns and that can be out of nervousness or as a way to smell things a little bit more thoroughly. He's got calm smelling and calm tongue flicking going on. In the photo that you're about to see, you're going to notice that he dis demonstrates an S shape. So he's in a defensive posture and he's frozen there. And that gives him the ability to assess the situation and decide if it's safe or not, which he obviously decides it is safe because then he starts this forward movement, tongue flicking, climbing, and he's investigating. Taking a look at Barkley's body language, who is a more advanced learner in regards to handling and human interaction, you see that there's no retreating as I approach the enclosure, as I take the cage card and the lock off, and, or as I open the door. Barkley comes out. He's performing slow, fluid movement as he leaves his enclosure. He's tongue flicking calmly, and he comes out onto the enclosure stand. Total rectilinear positioning, rectilinear movement, no essing. Now you see here when I approach him with my feet that he retreats from me. Notice that none of the snakes we've looked at so far have gone towards humans. They've all taken steps in order to avoid people, but they've gone towards objects and in the one case has gone towards another snake. Now you see that as Barkley goes towards this end of the enclosure stand he slows down and freezes and moves very very slowly I open his doors so that now he has access on both ends and he's pausing intermittently and freezing with no tongue flicking he likes to climb off of this end of his enclosure stand and climb onto the carpet and under the stand or under the enclosures across from his and I don't allow that. And so I have picked him up or redirected him so many times when he's done that, he was likely trying to decide if it was worth it or not to try again. And he eventually does try again. Notice his body language change when I pick him up. He's tongue flicking more rapidly and has a slight S in his neck, but he's not balling up, hiding, or striking. But when he has the option to stay with me or go on to an activity stand, he chooses the activity stand. Now he's only been on this stand I think one time before so it's relatively new to him so watch his body language and how it's different on this activity stand from what it was when he was right around his enclosure and on the enclosure stand that he is very very used to climbing around. His movement's a little more jerky, his tongue flicks are more quick and his body movement in general is just quicker as he's climbing up and he's moving forward. Notice, though, that he's not moving towards me. Most of this time, snakes really don't want anything to do with people. And given the option, they're going to move away from humans and not necessarily towards them. Very rapid tongue flicking. Now he pauses, and this is to assess what he's going to do next. Next, we're going to take a look at a snake that is not mine. It is highly fearful. It is balled up, hiding its head beneath its coils, which as we know from the paper we've gone over before, is the default anti-predator behavior for Python Regis. This is a fearful snake. She was freezing and hiding when the human was handling her and is just slightly more relaxed, left alone on the table. This is Barkley the first day that he arrived. He's hiding, his body is tense and stiff, and he is tightly anchored around that paper towel roll. If you watch closely, you can also see that he has elevated respiration. Just a note about Mesmer and the session you're about to see with him. Had I known how extremely fearful he was, I would have set him up differently. I would have given him a hide with the bottom and set his enclosure up differently. And I certainly wouldn't have gone about cleaning or handling him the way that I did in the session you're about to see, nor have I handled him in this manner since. This snake is Mesmer, and he is an extremely fearful snake. He is the most fearful snake that I have ever personally worked with. His body is tight, tense, and stiff. He is freezing. He is twitching. He is jerky. And he's exhibiting freezing behavior no matter what position he's in. And then he eventually resorts to striking. This is an extremely fearful animal. The background here is that 
a hide goes in that corner and he was never leaving it. I ended up taking off the hide to clean there because he was urinating, defecating, shedding in that hide and never, ever, ever coming out of it. I put him on this exercise station hoping he would relax, which he did not. He stayed completely balled up, hiding his head. He was frozen. He was tight. His body was tense and stiff. He was not moving at all. I decided that since he seemed so fearful of my hands, I would try picking him up and putting him back with a towel. Notice his body is still tight and tense. He's still stiff. He's got an S shape in the first third of his body with some intermittent tongue flicks started. And I thought that was a good sign, but he just never relaxed. I thought he was more comfortable with the towel touching him than my skin touching him, but we didn't make it back to his enclosure before he started striking. And then as I was trying to put him back into his enclosure, he flew out of my hands off the towel and into his water where he froze and didn't move for quite some time. And he was upside down for quite some time frozen. And then he righted himself and I was trying to get close enough to grab the key off the top of his enclosure and shut the door and he started striking. I wanted to share with you some headway we're making with Mesmer. He is progressing. He spends most of his nights now like this, with his head and just the first part of his neck sticking out and looking out of his hide box. That's an improvement over never coming out of his hide box at all. So I'm happy to see this and he stays that way while I'm close by. He's also doing target training and he will target all the way to that rock, about halfway from his hide to the enclosure door. And he used to snatch his food reinforcer and take it back into his hide with him and eat it. But now he's targeting to that rock, taking his food reinforcer and eating it out in the open. He is also drinking, coming out to drink, stretching out and drinking out in the open and remaining this way. And I can get close enough to him at least to get a photo. If you have a snake that you know from the beginning is as terrified and fearful as Mesmer was in that video I showed you, do not work with them in the manner in which I did in that video. If I had known to begin with the way he was, I would never have set him up that way or initiated our work together in that manner. The target training, the approach and retreat, and letting him passively habituate is working much better to gain his trust now. After that difficult case with Mesmer, I wanted to remind you what comfortable and relaxed looks like in some rural pythons. That was Sarek. This is Barkley. And you're about to see Gunji. All of the behavior you're seeing from these snakes is comfortable and relaxed with a little bit of cautious behavior when they're exposed to something new, but no big deal. And then we're just going to end here with Ezra on his branch. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Worlds at the Ranch. I hope that you found that educational and that you found it beneficial and that it helps you know when it's okay to continue interacting with your snake, when you need to back off, and when you need to just stop altogether. Because the last thing that we want to do is cause our snakes fear, anxiety, and distress. If you do that, you are not going to build trust with your snake. You're not going to have a good future relationship with an animal that could live 20, 30 years or more. Until next time, everybody please remember to always be kind and love your animals. Mm -hmm.